Maybe you've noticed that there is a lot of activity in the market right now. Plus, with a lagging economy and a world in distress, it's becoming harder than ever to break through the noise and get your message heard in this crowded marketplace. This past year, 2024, has brought changes to online business that we have never seen before. And to help you stay ahead, especially as we move into 2025, Today, I'm sharing four essential shifts that are working right now to help visionary women like you not only survive, but also thrive in this quickly changing landscape. Because it's easy to get pulled in a hundred different directions right now. And today I'm cutting through the noise to focus on what is really going to help and what no longer serves us in today's busy world. If you're ready to step into your next level with clarity, confidence, and alignment, stay tuned. These insights could make all the difference. Welcome to Herself, a space for women to have deep conversations about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential. So you can become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. After being in business for over two decades, I've learned, as you likely have too, that as you grow your business, your business grows you in unexpected, often challenging, yet miraculous ways. Here, we'll talk about how to get out of your own way so you can grow a business that's abundant and sustainable while allowing you to be a force for good in the world. I'll give you simple, actionable strategies, as well as wisdom and inspiration to help you root into your wholeness, lead from your values, and work in ways that feel deeply aligned so you can bring your true self into the world through your business and in every area of your life. All right, my friends, it's time for some real talk. 2024 has not been an easy year in business for most people. Talk to any business owner and if they're being really honest, they'll tell you that the landscape is changing, that they've been feeling the impact and if they're smart, that they're actively taking steps to acclimate to it. Some experts say that this shift really palpably started in January of this year. And maybe it's because it's been an election here in the US and quite a big election. Maybe it's because there are so many more people moving away from corporate jobs and stepping into entrepreneurship. Maybe it's because of the larger state of the world. Maybe it's all of these things. What we do know is that the market is shifting quite significantly. So think about it. When I first brought my business online back in 2008, I was one of the very few female entrepreneurs in this space. People were not accustomed to receiving email sequences, to going to free offers, to signing up for online courses. All of that was so, so new. And between that time and the late, say, 20 teens, even up to 2020, online marketing was very much like the Wild West. The market was pretty new to all of these things, both paid and free, and there wasn't a huge amount of discernment or diversity of options for people who were buying. So with this, messaging could be more vague, offers could be more minimally fleshed out, You could be more sporadic with how often you're showing up and the way that you're showing up, and still you could do very well in business. Not anymore, my friends. So with time, the market has evolved. People who were new to all of this back then, they have grown up. They have become more discerning. And there are many, many more choices for people now than ever before. So what do you do? You could say, oh, well, screw this. I'm not going to get in the game. Absolutely, you could do that. But if you're listening to this, that's likely not your true calling. You're here because you know that your soul's path, your vocation is to serve through the vehicle of a business. It's about service. And if that's the case, the most skillful thing that you can do to serve really effectively is to educate yourself about the shifts in the market and to do what it takes to get and stay in the game. Because here's the thing, we know this as women very deep in our bones, deep in our bodies. 
Everything is cyclical. Everything, what goes up must come down and what goes down must come up. So even though we're on a downward trajectory right now in the market, yes, an up is coming. And in many cases throughout history, those who got in on the down were well positioned when things started moving up. So these downward trending times can actually be huge opportunities. This is why it's wise to get on this now. There is a lot of opportunity here, even if you don't see it at first glance, and especially because most people may not be recognizing it right now. So here are four shifts that you're going to want to start making now, especially to kind of get in front of the eight ball, so to speak, as we head into 2025. So the first shift, and you're probably not going to want to to hear this from me, but it's the most important one, is to be more visible. That's right. You heard me. Be more visible. Again, I know that's likely not what you want to hear. I know that visibility trips you up. Parts Parts of you think that you're not good enough, that you're a fraud, that you don't know enough, that you're not young enough, that you're not thin enough, that you're not pretty enough, that you're not successful enough, that you're not enough, whatever it is. I get that. And still, the more visible you are, just showing up as you are, the more relevant and trustable you'll be to the people that you're serving. Being visible keeps you top of mind for people. It helps to build that know, like, and trust factor. So by being visible, you need to share pictures of you. Do a photo shoot. And if you need support with that, you could look at a few episodes back where I did a whole podcast on how to do a photo shoot. You need to be getting on video. Video marketing is really the way forward right now. If you're not getting on video, you're not being relevant. And if you're not getting on video, at the very least, you need to get on audio or to do both. So gone are other days when just publishing a blog or sending an email here and there was enough. We need more multidimensionality. This is how people can hear you, how people can see you, how they can really get to know you. And the more that they see you, the more that they hear from you, the more top of mind you'll be and the more more they'll trust you and more on trust a little bit later. So think about how different it is for you to hear me speaking these words how much more of an intimate experience it is than say, if you were just reading these words in a blog post, you get to know me and sense me at a much deeper level. And the same is true for you and the audience that you serve. And as you're being seen, be transparent, be vulnerable, be relatable. Let people see and really know you as a human being. Share your challenges, your triumphs, the key stories that made you who you are, share your values, and keep bringing all of those things back to them and how it serves them. Share what makes the work you do unique and how it's different from everything else that's out there on the market. So to do all of this, of course, as you go, you need to keep doing the healing work to let those scared parts of you know that they're safe and continue to show up being seen and being known. This is both and, not one and then the other. This is not a time to delay or stall getting in the game and being seen. This is a time of action, and you'll hear more about this in the next shift that I am recommending. So shift number two is to anticipate a longer lead time for new customers. Anticipate a longer lead time for new customers. So when someone doesn't know about you and they just hear about you, they're considered a cold lead. So for example, if someone finds you through a Facebook ad or hearing you speak on a podcast or through social media, they are cold in your audience. And in order for them to become a customer, you need to help them transition from being a cold to a warm and then ultimately a hot lead. And I speak more about 
this journey of a customer in the last podcast episode, 198, where I talk more about funnels and how we can embrace them in a more soulful way. Now, we are living through what many people are calling a trust recession right now, a trust recession. So with the Wild West of online marketing that was happening prior to 2020, I'd say up until about 2017-ish, a lot of people got burned. There were a lot of crappy webinars. (laughs) There were a lot of crappy online courses. And people have gotten more savvy. Like I said before, they've gotten more discerning. And this is a good thing. It takes longer for people to really come to trust you and to trust the value of what you're offering. So you need to start nurturing your audience much sooner than ever before, because it takes a lot longer for a new lead to move from cold to warm or hot. Whereas before that could sometimes happen instantly, Now it's at least three to six months. So if you want someone to buy your offer today, you needed to start attracting them and nurturing them six months ago. So if you've been procrastinating creating a lead magnet, which is just a free offer to attract your ideal client into your world, this is a very strong recommendation to get that up and out by the end of this year. Ideally, running some Facebook or Instagram ads to it. Then make sure that you have an effective nurture marketing strategy in place to help take that cold lead to a warm lead inside the world of your business. Another way to say this is take someone who doesn't know you at all to someone who knows, likes, and trusts you and is ready to say yes to the incredible offer that you are inviting them to. So you need to be staying in regular communication with them, staying visible to them, and staying top of mind for them. Help them to see that you are the right person to help them solve their problems and that you share similar values. So again, it takes longer for someone who's new to your world to become a customer. So start on it now. Do not delay this process. As a little girl, I loved playing school, and my favorite part was writing on a chalkboard with a fresh piece of white chalk. Today, my teacher's heart lives on, only now, instead of teaching with chalkboards, I make sure my online programs are stored and shared in the most organized, intuitive way possible. For the past few years, I've used Kajabi for this. It's heads and tails above any other online course platform that I've used since I first started teaching online back in 2008. Not only does Kajabi host all of my online programs, it also hosts all my program web pages and opt-in pages. It even hosts the private student-only podcasts I share inside my programs. Plus, it's easy for me and my team to use, and most importantly, it's easy for my students to use. I love it. If you're looking to up-level, streamline, and beautify things in your own business, whether it's how you deliver your online courses, create web pages, or even host your entire website, I invite you to enjoy a free 30-day trial with Kajabi, which is one of the sponsors for this podcast. You can click the link in the show notes to get started with your free 30-day trial. If you're like me, you'll be so happy you did. The only downside is no chalk is involved. All right, so shift number three is to be consistent. Be consistent. Simply sending a monthly newsletter or no newsletter at all is no longer going to cut it. Again, you need to be visible. You need to stay top of mind. You need to be regularly nurturing new souls who come into the world of your business, educating them about how you support them and solving their problems and realizing their deepest desires. You need to be really transparent about what you stand for and what you stand against. So you can't be in and out, sometimes sending a newsletter, sometimes not. You have to be reliable. This also helps to build trust and for the people in your audience to know that you're serious about what you're doing and that what you offer is truly legit. They need to know that they can count on you through the ups and downs through thick and thin. So 
decide what is your rhythm going to be. And I, I recommend at least twice a month as a bare minimum. And then when you feel ready, ideally build up to weekly. You want to make this just a core part of what you do each week. Set aside half a day to create your content that you are sending out. If you need more time, if you're just learning how to do this in the beginning, block off a full day if you need to, but make this a non-negotiable part of your daily rhythm. The more that you are consistent with yourself and showing up to create this content, the more obviously you're going to be consistent in showing up for other people. So do not skimp on this. And as you're putting together your plan for 2025, make sure that it includes a consistent content schedule to keep you in regular communication with your audience. So shift number four is to put things in place to help people decide. In this trust recession, people are taking longer to decide whether or not to work with you. So we've spoken about the importance of attract marketing. So drawing in leads through a very targeted lead magnet that speaks precisely to your ideal client and helps them experience a quick win with something that your larger offer is uniquely positioned to support them with, whether that larger offer is an online course or one-on-one sessions or a one-on-one package or a retreat or whatever it is. So in this, your ideal client needs to be very clearly defined because again, we've all heard that saying, if you're speaking to everyone, you're speaking to no one and that your messaging very specifically speaks to that person. So generic messaging does not work anymore. Generic targeting, talking, talking to a bunch of different people at once does not work anymore, especially if you are earlier in business. If you're someone who's very established, someone like Oprah or Glennon Doyle, they speak to many different people and that's just a whole different category of influence that most people are not at. So really get clear on who you're speaking to and really take time to refine your messaging. And I can say, again, as someone who has been in business since 2008, the time and attention that I'm putting on these things is more now than ever before. Things need to be very, very dialed in and very, very high quality. So now the next step after you've attracted these clients and after you've nurtured them is to help them decide whether or not to work with you. So again, your lead magnet is the qualifier. It draws in people who are good fit and it repels the people who aren't. So this is why we really want to reverse engineer everything so that you make sure the right people are coming in in the first place. You are sharing the right materials to help them really get to know you. And so then it's an easy yes for them to step into your offer. So again, you have your regular free content, ideally weekly, but at the very least twice a month to help build that trust and for these newer people in your audience to decide whether or not you are the person to help them solve the specific problems that they came to you with. And then say if you're launching an online program, you may want to consider extending the amount of time that enrollment is open. So maybe instead of having your cart open for seven days, consider having it open for 10 or even 14 days. Have more points of contact in between the time that enrollment opens and enrollment closes. So yes, be more visible during that time, more visible than usual. So show up on Instagram lives, have a free group coaching call, be available to get on free one-on-one discovery calls. So a consensus in the market right now is that you do have to work harder to make sales than in the past. So be willing to stay in the game Be willing to be relational rather than transactional. Be willing to show up and have these more intimate conversations with people. So when everyone is scaling, and I am not against scaling by any means, I am all about making things easier for us. But within that, we still need to do things that are unscalable, like having these personal touches of connecting with people and talking with them especially in this rapidly evolving AI world, 
that kind of personalization is going to go really far. But again, you need to show up, you need to be seen, you need to help people to even know that you exist so you can have these conversations. And then once you do have these conversations, you can really help them to see that you are the expert and that you do have what it takes to support them. And they can feel your heart and they can feel you as a human being and they can just feel that sense of trust and resonance in their bodies as you have those conversations. And then that kind of sales conversation, which is really a serving conversation, is backed up by all the previous points of contact that you've had with them since they first entered your world and did not know you at all. So you can see this is a journey and the trust is built step by step by step by step. The journey is longer than it has been in the past. The steps need to be much more dialed in and professional at your end than they have in the past. This isn't impossible, but it's raising the bar. So most importantly, get in the game. Up-level your game. If ever there was a time to do what Stephen Pressfield said, author of The War of Art, amongst other books, he said, go pro, this is the time. Yes, parts of you may be overwhelmed. Parts of you may be scared. They may doubt that you have what it takes. And I assure you, all of that is absolutely normal. It means that you are moving in the right direction. What it does not mean is that you should stop or stall. So the sooner that you get these pieces in place, the easier it will be for you to gain the momentum you need to thrive in today's rapidly changing market. The market is always changing. Just look at the economy or the real estate market. There's always ups and downs. Get in just because things are more challenging right now potentially doesn't mean that you shouldn't get in. So again, the four essential shifts you need to make to thrive in today's market are number one, be more visible. Number two, anticipate a longer lead time. Number three, be consistent. And number four, help people decide. All of these things are going to grow you as a human being, and they're going to dramatically expand your capacity as a business owner. So that when the waters are smoother again, you will be much more powerfully equipped to navigate them. So if you're starting with just one of these, I'd say start with number one, being visible. That's why I put it there first. Give yourself a challenge to do something every day to be seen and get your message out into the world, whether that's an Instagram story, a LinkedIn post, an email you send to your email newsletter, a Facebook group that you're a part of letting people know about your services, or taking time to get your lead magnet created. So that is the next big thing. Get that lead magnet created for your right fit client with your clear messaging to reach them. Get that up ideally on Facebook and Instagram ads, share it with your audience, start bringing new people into your world, and then create content consistently to speak to them and help them to build that know, like, and trust factor amidst today's trust recession. Take that first step and then take another step. Remember, empires and greatness are often built during these down cycles. So get in the game now and position yourself well for whatever is coming next. And if you want support in doing this, I have some spaces open before the end of this year for some free 30-minute breakthrough sessions. This is a time to get clarity on what's standing in your way and also to really see the next steps you need to take to propel your business forward in 2025. So you can book your free breakthrough session in the show notes below. So you don't need confidence to take these steps, my friend. You just need courage, which I know that you have in spades. Courage to do something different. Courage to get outside your comfort zone. Courage to share your expertise with the people who need it. Courage to help your unique message stand out in a crowded market. And courage to live your vocation, your soul's calling, because isn't that the most important thing? It is for me. 
I'm here for you. I'm cheering you on. And again, if you want my support in a one-on-one breakthrough session, I'd love to offer it and support you there. I'll see you next time, my friends. Thank you for joining me today. And remember, change doesn't come from listening alone. I invite you to commit to taking one small or large courageous action after today's conversation. One step you can take if you haven't already is to sign up for my Sunday journal. It's a weekly newsletter filled with inspiration and reflections about the intersection between spiritual entrepreneurship and fulfilling your potential to help you become the woman you truly are in every area of your life. You can subscribe at programs saraavonstovercom forward slash journal. And if you found this podcast valuable, please share it with the women in your world. Also, I'd be very grateful if you'd leave a review. It helps others find resources like this. And I'd love to hear what's coming alive for you after listening today. Above all, keep going and never forget the unique offerings you and your true self bring to the world. Until next time, I'm sending you my heartfelt support.